Wow, man, that's a group. He makes well, it's great. great books. It's great. So, uh, also Tiffany Haddish's uh, autobiographies there. They got uh, Stephen King books. They got a radio play of Dracula with Tim Curry, Alan Cumming, and an all star cast. Mm-hmm. Anything you want. They comedy, comedy albums, whatever you want. Right. So, Orpheus, it's great to see you. I haven't seen you a couple couple years. Good to see you as well. And uh, last time I saw you, you were uh, on the show. You were giving your wife uh, very uh, loud orgasms. Yes. Uh, using fire flame. Yes. And uh, you are, uh, if people don't know Orpheus, and if you're in L.A. in the fattest scene, you know him. Mm-hmm. He is the Jackie Robinson of the Bontrim. <laughs> The Jackie Robinson of debauchery. That's a good one. I, 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 did, I, I for the first time we talked on the show, I, 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 I gave you that one. But uh, although, I, although uh, you know, uh, I think uh, you've paved the way. I think it's uh, uh, there's there's no more. There's uh, everybody. Uh, there's a lot of uh, African Americans in the scene now in the fetish scene. Yes. That weren't there before. Yes. You broke the ground, and now yeah. Yes. You know, when I first started coming in, I was the black community. Me and my wife. <laughs> you know, what I mean, there was no black community. There was nobody. You could go on Facebook and find 50 million people right. um, who are in these fetish groups, but you never see them go out. Right. And I would get messages all the time saying, you know, I didn't know we did this. I always felt alone. You know what I mean? Like, I didn't know that anybody else could be into this of color. And so when we first started really? going, yeah, that was like my claim to fame. That's why we kept doing it out mm-hmm. in public, because I didn't know people did this in their bedroom. You know, I mean, oh, yeah, you told me that. Yeah, I was like, you know, I, I thought if you just did this on stage or you did it for a living or you smacked people's ass for money. Mm-hmm. And then people started saying, you know, I started seeing people living a lifestyle like this. Right. And I'm like, this definitely doesn't work for African Americans. And then I started. Mm-hmm. And it's like, it's not about race or culture or anything. You know, BD Seminate is a, a method of sexual expression. Right. And that's it. Right. And, and you're the master of fire, you're the master, master of choking. Yeah. And I was on your website, uh, I did a lot of research, and <laughs> you've been posting a lot of really sexy photos on, on Instagram lately. Thank you. Thank uh, you. A lot of women that I haven't seen before <laughs> <laughs> that are, uh, and uh, the, uh, one of the specialties, one of Orpheus' specialties, and you teach a class on this, is black tie bondage. Black tie bondage, yeah. Now, now what is, do you have to wear a tuxedo while you're spanking the girl's ass? I mean, what, is, what is black tie bondage? You know what? It's a style of bondage that I invented. Basically, it's, it's a way of uh, tying a person and then easily taking them out with one flick of the wrist or with the removal of a, you know, a gift. A stick or, yeah. A stick or something like that. And um, it works really well for people who've never been tied before. They don't know if they have Mm -hmm. uh, anxiety or claustrophobia. Or people who may have uh, medical issues. You know, they want to be tied, but they're off their back or their legs or X, Y, and Z behavior. Right. So I just tie a limb, black tie style, and they say, oh, my leg is going to get a little numb or something like that. Take it out. They're all That's good for grandpa, man. (laughs) (laughs) Have you teach one of grandpa's uh, girlfriends and uh, and we'll go to set it and because uh, Hannah because we're talking about Hannah because we, we have another guest that's coming but since we can't talk about uh, her fetishes and things for too long <laughs> Hannah now how how deep do you go into the uh, S&M BDSM because I'm like a dilton I like going to the fetish clubs I like to watch a little bit in the bedroom I play around a little bit but I'm not serious about it um I'm very much into like erotica and I like my man to be dominant but yet romantic, rough and romantic at the same time. That makes sense. They take me and put me up against the wall and all that good stuff and talk to me. I like that stuff. <laughs> that's, that's romantic. <laughs> right. Yeah. Like, but it can be. It can, choking can be romantic. Yeah. I mean, I've been choked before. You know, I've only been with a few people but uh, he didn't do it to the point where I was comfortable. Everything else I was comfortable with, I just thought I was going to be like, Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Everything else was great, the spanking and all that stuff. But. You know, my role model is gonna sound it's gonna sound horrible, right. but from a romantic book standpoint, uh-huh. Mr. Darcy. Oh. You know what I'm saying? The the guy from what is it, Little Women or something right, like right, that. Right, 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 right. Mr. Darcy was excellent because he knew what he wanted. He went after it. He wasn't mm-hmm. vulgar, overbearing, pompous, or anything. Right? right. She had a need. He fixed it. Right. He knew what he wanted from her. She uh, he allowed her to give it to him. Right. When she was ready. Right. Right. He was totally self sufficient. Right. So many people get into this and they're like, I'm gonna take from you. I'm gonna keep taking. I'm gonna keep taking. I'm never gonna give anything back. I'm the dominant. That's my job. Right. And it's like it becomes exploitive at some point in time. Mm -hmm. Right. So what I try and do is make sure that I know what I want 
and I can have it with or without you, right. but I'd rather do it with you. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. I don't want you to do it for me. I want you to do it with me. Right. Well, here's the thing, uh, and this is this is my question. This is my problem, and this is uh, I was going to get into this with you because uh, the <laughs> hashtag Me Too. Every oh. time you're on, you're on on a very timely thing. Oh. Now, no, but, but here's the thing. Now, you are somebody that instinctively, I think, I've seen it, knows what women want. And, 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 you know, obviously there's room for error with everybody. Me, I usually, don't, I can't see the signs. You, you see the signs that I don't see. Here's, here's the thing. Both are, both have their down drawbacks. Right. Okay. You yeah. get laid more than I do. That's one drawback. <laughs> <laughs> but not for me, not for you. I, I'm not going to say all that. But what <laughs> I will say is, if you don't know what a person wants, you can ask. Right. Here's the thing. If if you think you know what they want and you push it, you're in an area where it's a gray area. You can be, you know, cause <laughs> trauma right. in some way or cross a boundary. Right. Because you you may know what they want. They may know what they want, but they're not re re ready to do it with you. Right. Uh, or they're not ready for you to expose them in that way. Mm -hmm. Right. So... If I if I if if I'm with a person I'm seeing, and at, they start sliding my hand up to their throat subconsciously, or yeah. or every time I put my hands towards their face, they put their my neck in there, right, head, right, right, you know, and then I give them a squeeze. I didn't tip. I, they're gonna like I didn't ask you to do that. It's like every, your body did, but they have to also consciously perceive right. that that's what they want, and then there has to be some kind of verbal. Uh, Verbal agreement around it, right? Because that you know, usually when I see you doing these things, it's a performance. So yeah, somebody that you've already you've already uh, have a relationship with. Yeah. So it, this this sometimes can be uh, uh, even with them, it can be a, it right. can be an issue. Right. Because when I put, most of the time, most people don't know that they went out. What they remember is they were standing right. up and now they're on the floor. Right. Right. And they feel vulnerable and open, and there could be some other feelings. Also, sometimes they they go to a place. Right. You know, I choked this one girl, and she came back, and she was like, oh, I thought I was on the couch with my mom eating soup. Right. And then for her to be back here, it was like being teleported or something. It was, it was, yeah, it was, I actually, uh, somebody gave me a sleeper hold. I had a, a similar reaction. <laughs> it was, it was, it was, it's, a, it's a long story. It's high school. But we were goofing around, and like, I'm like, sleeper hold bullshit, and they gave me the sleeper hold. And I had, like, this vision of, like, it was, like, skeletons over me and all this stuff. And it was right. Just, I was just... It was the people that were standing over me saying, "Are you okay?" Right. But it just in my mind, I thought I was in another world. Right. I just, I just want to say that you know you have to be careful because there's a lot of there's a cultural shift around sexuality. Right. Right. And it's not about it, it's about being uh, coming at it from a mutual place of agreement, mm -hmm. not a mutual place of desire. Right. We can both desire each other, but that's not enough. Right. We can both want to have sex with each other, but that's not enough. Right. You know, we both now have to say that we both want to do this, and what is it that we're going to do? Right. Right. Now, did you feel this before the Harvey Weinstein thing? It just, it just sits in that. Well, no, I mean, it's always been there, but right. it's now uh, to a different level. There's a thing called Title Nine. Right. Okay. And I'm gonna get so raped over the cold for just saying this shit. Um, well, you don't have to. Okay, I won't say it then. I'm not gonna go into it. I'm not gonna. Yeah, go I, I know what you're talking about. Because I, and so what I was gonna I, what I was gonna say is that is now, uh, and I, I was gonna go into this with uh, Hannah and this, but by the way, Hannah, see, great guy, a, a plus yeah, plus, yeah. a plus plus, all right, thank you. But um, now, how you know how how did you de I develop it to the man that you are today? The confidence. I mean, it wasn't like you were, you know. You were born. The, the 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 nurse slapped you on the ass. You pulled her by, by the hair, slapped her on the ass, and said, "Now that's how you do it." You know? <laughs> so how did? I mean, did, did, gradually. Now you say that you only did this for performance. You didn't do this in the bedroom. No, mm -mm. no I'm. I've always been a dominant individual. Okay, when I was in junior. Okay, <laughs> I don't know how much I should say. Um, a little bit about me. I draw a lot of things out of Morpheus that he normally would not say. <laughs> I, I used to be a uh, a short, fat kind of kid, you know, right. but people love me. Yeah. You know, everybody wants to always talk to me about their relationships. Mm -hmm. So at a, even at a young age, I had a little bit more knowledge than the average person my age. So when we started doing what is that we do, right. um, I'd already had a background. You know what I'm saying? So right. 
<laughs> no, I, I'm, I'm, no uh, our other guest is arrived. Oh, okay. The other guest. The other guest. 